angels feast on your friend. It is over. made sure this phone fell into your hands. You and me are going to sift through clues, codes, and face some terrifying enemies. Sound like fun? Hi there folks, I'm Bob Brimmington, escape room game designer with Escape Hunt and really excited to be here with you today. We have just seen the trailer for the incredible new Doctor Who game, The Lonely Assassins, which looks awesome and also a little bit scary. Today we're going to have a chat with the makers of the game, Maze Theory. And then later in this stream, we will be talking to Ingrid Oliver about a reprising her role as Petronella Osgood. We'll also be talking to Asmi Shah from the found foam games developer, Kaigen Games, and Gavin Collinson, Doctor Who writer extraordinaire. First of all, though, we are going to chat with Russ Harding from the developer Maze Theory to hear more about the exciting plans they have in store for Doctor Who. Russ, can you tell us a little bit more about what's on the way? Yeah, sure. We're really, really excited to announce two Doctor Who um, titles. So Doctor Who, The Edge of Reality and The Lonely Assassins. So really excited to be able to go back to the world of Doctor Who after we successfully launched um, Edge of Time last year. Edge of Reality and The Lonely Assassins, do they form a trilogy with Edge of Time? I guess you could call it a trilogy. I think the most interesting thing about uh, this approach is exploring them across different technologies, uh, different platforms. So with VR, the focus is very much about uh, the sense of presence. Uh, with mo the mobile phone, uh, it's very much about the immersion, especially in a lost found game, placing you in that situation. It's got a very intuitive interface. And then with console, it's really about the deeper level of storytelling that we're able to reach. Um, yeah, so we're really excited about explore, exploring those different technologies. Um, do we need to be able to play them in order to get the story? Absolutely not. You can play them individually, but I think if you play them together, and as I said, across those different mediums, um, you really get that uh, a sense of the depth of the story in the world um, that's being created. And am I right in thinking these games that are being launched are part of the larger Time Lord Victorious multimedia project? Uh, so around Time Lord Victorious, we're really excited to be revisiting the edge of time um, and being able to create an update uh, that really speaks to the fans. So it's actually three games. There's Edge of Time being, being like updated for the event, plus Edge of Reality and Lonely Assassins. Wow. When can we expect it? Spring 2021 um, is going to be the big, uh, big, big time um, for us. Now, Edge of Reality, how does it differ from its predecessor, Edge of Time? We've taken that original story and we've expanded it out, reinvented it with a bit of a twist. It, anyone played the um, Edge of time, they'll know that it ended at a point where it could probably continue. We've been able to explore bringing in new uh, familiar um, iconic characters, new worlds and a special guest star uh, who we'll probably reveal at the end of the stream. So it's prede the predecessor Edge of Time is being reimagined for a console setting. What's changed there? Um, aside from the content uh, we've already sort of mentioned, uh, we really focus on trying to keep those immersive, intuitive mechanics in, that you have in VR, but reimagine them into a console setting. There's also a lot of new game mechanics that we're able to introduce, um, as well as the more expanded story, 
um, and new foes. Speaking of foes, the Lonely Assassin is going to be third in the series. What kind of foes can we expect there? Uh, so we're really excited to um, revisit probably one of the most iconic uh, and fan favourite episodes, which is Blink. Um, and to be able to return to Western Drumlins uh, to discover uh, more about that story. Um, and I think in a really immersive way, we're working with our partner, Kaigan Games, uh, who are the, I suppose, the uh, experts in the genre of lost phone, um, lost phone games. Um, am I right in thinking that there will, it'll be sort of, as well as a touch of horror, there will be plenty of investigation and sort of puzzling adventure as part of that game? Yeah, it's very much based around investigation and exploring, uh, as well as a little bit of horror. <laughs> Thank you so much, Russ. I am thrilled and super excited to be playing those games. And congratulations to the team. Awesome stuff. So, aside from speaking with Russ, I was also privileged to host a panel with some of the talented team involved in bringing Edge of Reality and the Lonely Assassins to life. So, speaking with Azmi Shah, CTO of Kaigen Games, here's me from the past. It's definitely fun because Doctor Who is such a decades long series with deep lore and, and, and even deeper fan base, to get a chance to be a part of that is definitely exciting. And uh, adding new things to the series is truly an honor. Absolutely. Um, it must be an extremely exciting time. We saw in that trailer, we saw some small clips from um, Blink, the original, one of the original TV episodes featuring the Weeping Angels. Can you tell right. us a little bit how the lore of Blink feeds into the game without giving too much away? Well, we get to see a continuation of what happens in that episode. So basically, if you, if you have seen that episode, we see the angels as they were left in an abandoned house and with just two people knowing what really went down there. So this, the, where the game takes place is what happens if someone were to re-enter the house and that's where we continue the story. <laughs> oh, wow. That yeah. sounds amazing. I saw in the trailer there that it's a found phone game. Can you tell us a little bit more about what exactly that is? It's not a genre I'm very familiar with. The best I can explain the found phone genre is by saying that the way we communicate is getting more digital over the years. And the phone phone generates a way for us to explore that narratively through unique themes. So the genre also lends itself to be more mystery driven as phones are such a personal thing, right? So it makes it, it makes it really nice to explore and sort of peel back the layers and explore what's going on. Are there any uh, challenges with storytelling through that different medium? While you experience the game in a, in, a, in a new perspective, so it is also quite limiting though as to what sort of story or narrative that can, you can put in that format, right? Mm -hmm, so absolutely. that is definitely a big challenge. So can you tell us, is the game going to be as spooky as the show episodes that feature the Weeping Angels? They are very terrifying. Yes, definitely, definitely spooky, uh, oh, without spoiling anything. <laughs> so all I can say is it's going to be a different kind of spooky than the Blink episode. I'm also thrilled to announce that Ingrid Oliver will be reprising her role for The Lonely Assassins. Ingrid, are you excited to be showing us more of Dr. Osgood? I was really excited. I, to be honest, I didn't quite know what to expect when I got the phone call saying, um, do you want to take part in this game? Um, and I'm always delighted to, to pick up the role of Osgood because um, I love playing her. Um, so I, didn't, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. I think I, 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 I thought it was going to be me in a, in a green lycra bodysuit because that's what I imagine all computer games. I, I volunteered to bring my own costume because I thought maybe that's, that's what it would involve. But actually they had Osgood's costume from the proper costume from from the TV show, so I was absolutely delighted. I put the I put the clothes back on again. Um, I hate I hate it when I, I always hate it when actors 
when actors talk about a character in the third person, but she, Osgood, because um, it is me playing Osgood, but I genuinely feel like a different person when I put those toes on. And I was, it was, it was brilliant, especially during lockdown when, when we haven't been able to work very much. It was, it was lovely to, to yeah, go back to an old favourite. Um, amazing. Oh, well, you've given us a little spoiler there because I was going to ask if uh, one of Petrona, if one of um, Osgood's famous outfits was going to be making a return. And I'm very glad to hear it is because yes. they're, fact, they're an amazing nod and ongoing homage. Um, not a real spoiler. I was going to ask you anyway. <laughs> um, um, how was playing the role in The Lonely Assassins different from playing it in uh, for a show? Yeah, it felt very real and immediate and it was all quite hand it was it was just oh sorry that's my that's my email um yeah it, it felt um also what it, it is funny because when you're when you're not filming close-ups you can move around a lot more um and so you're quite free it feels very real like you're in the situation which is terrifying considering what we were filming absolutely um are the props also terrifying in real life when you say the props, you're referring to the angels. The angels. Um, I didn't know if we were allowed to say that. I see. I'm just. I'm the Doctor Who world. When you're just, just don't say anything because you're scared that you're going to say the wrong thing. Um, I, I. I. What's lovely about Doctor Who is I. I always, when I've been asked who what, what what I'd like to do next if I was to come back in any way, I've definitely said I'd love to work with the Weeping Angels many times because they're my favorite um they're always the the creep the monster monster whatever you want to call them i found most terrifying so um i was delighted and they're there and yeah you, they're, they were there again i don't know what i was expecting like a green screen with some dots on it um but they were actually there and which was thrilling for me i took lots of photos even though you're not supposed to and i'm maybe maybe once the game's out then i'll be allowed to put them on instagram and stuff at some point <laughs> Um, well, but yeah, I'll be definitely yeah. keeping an eye on your Instagram for that then. Yes. <laughs> um, I also have some more questions for uh, Gavin. Um, Gavin Collinson is a scriptwriter for Doctor Who and he contributed in large part to the writing on this project. Gavin, what do you think is the key to Doctor Who's enduring appeal? Ingrid Oliver. Yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> It says here, and May's theory, but I don't know who they are. Um, Answer. <laughs> well, I'm kind of joking, but actually, the, 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 a number of fantastic characters that show has got is, I think, uh, one of its real attributes. And so as a writer, when uh, I was approached to do this, I'm not just saying it, but the first thing I said to Russ and the boys was, can, can we get Osgood back in? Can we get Ingrid back in? And that was the first call we made. And so um, if you enjoyed Blink, this is Blink plus Osgood, so like, you know, I, I was in seventh heaven, I think a lot of times will be. Um, the enduring appeal, I think, is, is twofold and kind of paradoxical. One is Doctor Who changes all the time and in a very obvious sense, the lead character can regenerate. And so it, 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 can, it can evolve to tell different stories, relevant stories. Um, and and that's, that's the answer that most people will give and I think that, that's perfectly valid. But also since 1963, it, it's retained its heart. It's retained the things it does well which is scaring people, exciting people, bringing families together, giving you those uh, water, cooler, water cooler moments, virtual water cooler. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's witty, it's, it's funny, but it's also uh, thrilling. Um, so it's, it's all those things that various genres try to be, but it brings them together and, you know, puts them in a little blue box and sends it spinning through time and space. Um, it's irresistible uh, and it's, uh, it's just the best show in the world. Because I watched, I rewatched Blink last night in preparation for this panel. Because I, I remember watching it obviously first time. Well, yeah, first time round, and I loved, I loved it. It's one of my favourites, as it is a lot of people's, I think, that episode. But um, watching it again last night was so, it's so, yeah, it's so good that um, Kerry Mulligan is amazing, and when, yeah, to be able to be part of that legacy. Sorry, I'm now looking in the wrong place. This is a nightmare. Um, <laughs> looking into the camera, um, but to be part of the Blink episode as Osgood, I was. It was like a real. It was such a treat. Um, so I would watch it if I wasn't in it. I mean, I'd play it if I wasn't in it. I'd probably play it anyway. I think the thing that really excited That's us. That. Sorry. To think about like the lost phone, um, 
sort of like type of game mechanic and then bring it together with something so iconic from from the world of Doctor Who it is because it's such an immersive form of storytelling as well it really really does carry that sense of tension through when you play it and you know just seeing it come to life um as though it's sort of like happening in real time. So I think it's going to be really special. I think it's and really I special. think I think I think it's worth thanking uh, the BBC and the team in Cardiff who made the show because they were so open, so helpful, and there were new things they wanted to do. And and some IPs, would, I suspect, would just say no. Uh, they were really keen to make this new, fresh, absolutely part of the brand. But they they were um, I, I found them enormously helpful to work with. So big thanks to them. Yeah, Gavin, you've written for many different kinds of media. Um, did you find storytelling in a game environment very different? Yeah, it's more collaborative, um, but it, it, it's th there's still that thing. People think it's totally different, but it's not because you still have to have the hooks. You still have to have that darkest hour where everything seems lost. You still have to have that uh, spoilers, but ending where uh, hopefully people didn't see it coming, but they walk away from the narrative pleased. Um, but you've also got all the other tricks to play with. So the visuals uh, are just amazing on this. I mean, they're nothing to do with me, so, uh, but they're fantastic. And the, the, the returning cast, returning the characters that we've got, um, again, just fabulous. From a writer's point of view, the actors that we've got on board, you give them your lines, they make them a million times better. So I'm delighted, you know, so it's, um, it's different, but there's enough similarities for it not to be a problem. Absolutely. Um, it must be wonderful seeing the things you've imagined come to life like that in a different, in all kinds of different media. Um, yeah, it's very special. Absolutely. Do you think that these games would make a good introduction to Doctor Who for non-fans? Uh, I think they would because they're, they're, they're very engaging. There's, if you're a fan, there's lots in there that you will, you will take away uh, that, that isn't 100% um, uh, they're not prerequisites to understanding the plot, but there's little references to very you know, to a lot of eras of Doctor Who. But if you if you've never watched a show once, it's it, they're very welcoming games. Uh, in other words, they they fill you in on the background on the characters, and you, you pick it up very quickly. Uh, and the nature of Doctor Who is it, it's a very fast-paced narrative, so it will sweep you up. Um, I don't know, Ingrid, when you were doing it, did you think it was something that was very welcoming to, to people that hadn't seen the show? But it felt very immersive. It felt it, in, that, in that way that when, when games are done well, it feels like its own world and you feel like you're totally in that world. Um, so yes, is, your, is the answer to that, Galen, thank you. Um, <laughs> But I, I, I feel like, I mean, the welcoming, I think, is I think is a good word for who generally anyway, in whatever, mm. um, whatever form it takes, because that's the aim of the show, I think, generally. Um, so, yeah. Absolutely. Um, Russ and Gavin, together, what do you guys think is one of, what are you guys most excited to share with us about all the, about among all these three games that we are getting to see more of and new things from? What's most exciting, what's the most excited that you are to share with us? I suppose for me, the most exciting thing is to start to see these stories exist across multi, sort of like multi-tech, if you like, multiple different platforms. And they all, um, I suppose capture sort of like the immersiveness of the show and place you in it, be it in VR, be it playing via mobile or console. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm a great, I'm a great fan of the show, but I think the thing that's so, so compelling is that from a story point of view, it engages and touches with everyone. It's, it, it is a very accessible story. I think as Gavin was saying, it, it touches on many genres. It's not just, uh, one genre ever. It's, it seems to touch on many. Absolutely. It sounds like they are genre spanning, but still very true to the uh, feel and general vibe of Doctor Who. And I'm genuinely super excited to play them. Um, I'd like to say thank you to all our guests and obviously huge congratulations because it sounds like it's been an incredible and very rewarding project. And I'm very excited for you guys. Um, 
gift, but as a final treat for all us keen gamers who don't get quite as much Doctor Who content as we as we um, want in our games. Um, we actually have an exclusive teaser from Edge of Reality featuring a very familiar favourite from the show. I'll see you all in the metaverse. A million years from now, reality itself was almost destroyed. It was saved by a hero. Yeah, it was saved by you. Doctor. Just probably not the one you were expecting. 